Before you begin learning how to CAD a West Coast dry face, this is just a quick introduction on how a West Coast dry face works. A West Coast dry face is a dry face with usually six or eight wheels, although occasionally it can have ten. And the center wheels have usually an eighth of an inch center drop. This prevents the scrubbing of the outer wheels, which can cause the tread to wear, the robot to wobble, improper turning, motor overheating, gearbox strain, among other things. A West Coast drive base is also a type of tank where the wheels are cantilevered, which means that the wheels stick out from the frame rather than being fully contained by the robot frame. So for instance, that is what this would look like rather than something like that. Sorry for the bad drawing. Now I mentioned that it is a type of tank drive base. In order to fully understand why a West Coast drive base has this one eighth of an inch center drop, it's important to understand what a tank drive base is. This is something that most of you should be familiar with. It's basically where there is a left set of wheels and a right set of wheels. And you can control the individual wheel groups, direction and speed to control the overall robots direction, speed, and turning. In these two cases, the wheels are going in the same direction, either all backwards or all forwards. Now this causes the robot overall to go backwards or forwards. However, in these two cases, the wheels are going in opposite directions. And so this can cause the robot to rotate either left or to rotate right. One of the drawbacks of a tank drive base is if it gets too long, it can become really difficult to turn because there's more friction between the wheels and the ground. So essentially having a shorter drive base will make it easier to turn. The West Coast drive base is the solution to this. Because the wheel has an eighth of an inch center drop, it's leaning backwards or leaning forwards at a slight angle. This will allow for the wheels on the ground to act as a shorter drive base, even though the drive base itself might be longer. This provides all the benefits of having a tank drive base without having the drawback of maneuverability issues. However, with the introduction of the Swerve drive base, which is a more powerful and versatile drive base, the WCD has just become less useful and so we tend to go with the sort of drive base. Now one instance where the West Coast drive base would still be useful is if the game had a different terrain. So if it wasn't just flat ground and it had more bumps, then we might choose to go with the West Coast drive base. That's the introduction to a West Coast drive base. If you're looking for examples, you can look to 254's drive bases from the past 20 years up to the 2020 to 2021 season. This is a great place to refer to because they were one of the teams who developed and popularized the West Coast Drive Base. To look for an overview of what was covered, please look at the slide deck.